But we were talking about France, so I'll tell you the story. I don't remember. I've told a lot of stories already, thank God, in this class. So I don't remember if I told you the story or not. And I'm pretty sure that I did, but I'll tell it again. Okay, we have some new comments. How about, the, how about the Rebbe went to France, the, the Rebbe Rishad? He spoke all brief, briefly about the uh, the fourth Rebbe of Chabad going to France. And so I'll tell the story about the fourth Rebbe of Chabad going to France. And the Rebbe, the first a mimer, first discourse that the Lubavitcher Rebbe, our Rebbe, gave in 1951 was a Rebbe gave, 1951, he, he mentioned how all the, all the Rebbe's of Chabad, they themselves spread out Judaism, and he brought this story. What's the story? One day, the Rebbe Marash was a very impressive person. We don't have a picture of him, an official picture. He was a very impressive looking person. They say it was also very large, but I get, anyway. And so he told two of his Hasidim that he wants to go to France. So they traveled from France, from the city of Lubavitch, that that's where the Rebbe Marash is called, Rebbe Shmuel, where he was, to, to, um, to France. I don't know what city it was in France, but anyway, it, it was a journey of you know several hours. So they, they traveled. And they went to a um, a very fancy hotel, <clears throat> and they and they couldn't figure out what the rebbe wanted. But you didn't ask any questions, you know. And <clears throat> the rebbe went to the the uh, counter, the uh, and and he said, "I want the most expensive room in the place." So they said, "Well, the most expensive room in the place is taken, but we have the the second most expensive. You know, we don't have the the emperor's room." royal room, we have the presidential room, or whatever. So he took that room. <clears throat> he took that room, and he went to the casino. Everybody, now, France is a pretty decadent place, right? So they went to the, every place that was casinos and other, you know, unspeakable things, in this class, anyway, unspeakable. So he went to the casino, and he sat down. And he sat down. He sat down in the casino. Now, he was a very impressive-looking person, and you could also tell, you know, that he was a Jew. But in France, sort of like anything went. And I guess maybe it wasn't like at that time, such intense anti-Semitism, whatever it was. Anyway, so he sat there. But he was very, it, it, you could, it was very noticeable. And I don't know if he ordered anything like a cup of water or something or a tea. I don't think so. Anyway, he sat there. So he's, they couldn't figure out what is he doing? You know, what is, what's he so he, <clears throat> he walked up to a certain young man that was um, playing roulette. And he walked over to him and he said, young man, <clears throat> you're drinking, the wine that you're drinking is not Jewish wine. In Judaism, there's very strict restrictions about wine. Wine that was lifted up by a non-Jew cannot be drunk by a Jew. Some people even say that if an Aju looked at it, that's already, in any case, wine especially has to be not made by an Anju, even touched by an Anju. It's a special thing. Wine called Yayan Nesech. Yayan Nesech. No, Stam Yayan. Stam Yayan. Uh, please. So wine is not supposed to be, there's different laws about it, but wine is not supposed to be touched by an Anju. So we went up to this person. And he said, young man, non-Jewish wine stuffs up the heart. Now, this young per this young fellow, you couldn't tell he was Jewish. He didn't, he dressed totally like a non-Jew, no connection. He was drinking non-Jewish wine. <clears throat> and he said, you should know that wine, non-Jewish wine stuffs up the heart. Metamtem is a lave. It stuffs up the heart. One second, let me do this here. Does this work? No, one minute. No. Okay, let's see how do we do this here. Let me. I wanted my picture to be bigger. How do we do this? Do we do this? Do we do this like this? Try it. No, 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 no. That's not what I want at all. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> so um, he went up. He said, "Young." He went and he sat back down. He sat down. After a couple of minutes. He walked up to this young man again and said, young man, be a Jew. Zayn Ayid, you should be a Jew. And then he left, walked out. This young man was 
you know, playing roulette. So we asked people, who, who was that? Who was that man? And people said, uh, uh, we don't know. You know, we don't know who he is. So we went to the doorman and said, who is that man? He said, well, I don't know, but he took the second most expensive room in the hotel. It's in that room over there. Okay. Meanwhile, the Rebbe himself, when he went out, he was so exhausted from the efforts that he put into this. He sat down in a chair that the chair was designed to be carried. They didn't, I guess they didn't have an elevator or an escalator. Maybe there was no such thing in those times. But anyways, they, it, it had two poles on it and it was, it was lifted up. They would lift it up and take people up to the next floor. So he sat down in that chair, not knowing what it was. He, I guess he was just so, uh, how do you say, flustered by the meeting that he had. And they started to lift him up. And he said, no, 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 I, I, I'm on this floor. You don't have to pick me up. It was a very unusual thing that he was, you know, so disoriented that he didn't, the Rebbe. And he went to the room. Shortly thereafter, that fellow, <clears throat> he went to the Rebbe's room, knocked on the door, and he asked, who are you? You know, what did you say that to me for? And they got into a conversation, and they talked for a while. They said that afterwards, the Rebbe left. Afterwards, the Rebbe left. So we've done with it. That young man, eventually, he came to Lubavitch. And his name, they said the name of the family was Klein. And that he eventually became, he, he <clears throat> left his uh, non-Jewish ways and customs and thoughts and everything and became a religious Jew and became a Hasid, Hasid Chabad. And he had a family, which was a, a notable family in, in the Chabad community. So the thing that was amazing was, is how did the Rebbe know from Lubavitch what was going on in France, and especially that the right time had come to meet this person, and this person was going to be in such and such a place at such and such a time, and that to say exactly the proper words. But that's the whole idea of going into strange places, and that's what we learned about in the morning, that God is an investor, and puts in his power and to the Jewish people and scatters the Jewish people around in order to make a profit, to bring other Jews back to Judaism. Have a good day with Mashiach now. Thank you very much. God willing, tomorrow, 8.15 in the morning. Rabbi. Ubracha. Rabbi. Yeah. Is the prohibition of, of a non-Jew touching the wine, uh, does that only apply on Shabbos? No. No. Because I, my my father buys wine from a, a it's store the wine. If the wine is closed and it has two, if the wine is made by a Jew and it was under supervision and no one touched it and then it was put into a bottle and the bottle was closed with two seals, then non-Jews can touch it. It doesn't affect the wine. Even on Shabbos, okay. Shabbos is no difference between Shabbos and any day okay. as far as the wine goes. Good. Okay, see you everyone tomorrow, 8.15. Thank you for coming. God bless you all with Mashiach. Mm -hmm. I see there's some more questions to ask them tomorrow because I have somewhere to go. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rabbi. My pleasure.